Hello, this is Cityscape, a regular vodcast featuring people, place, and ideas that impact Livonia. I'm Dan West of the Livonia Chamber of Commerce. Today we are here at the Greenmead Historic Village, where we will show you an expanded holiday light display and discuss activities for the entire family coming here in December. And joining us today is the Livonia Parks and Recreation Superintendent, Ted Davis, who partnered with the Livonia Chamber of Commerce to put this display together. Ted, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Dan. So, uh, Ted, just give us a quick overview of what do we have here at Greenmead Historic Village. What we're doing here this year is we have lighting on the Alexander Blue House. We have lighting on the church, uh, the bungalow, the gear store, um, the Newburgh Schoolhouse. A lot of our trees are lit up in this area, so there was an expansion of the lights display that we had last year. We'll be continuing outdoors with visits from Santa, weather permitting, on the front porch of the Blue House. We'll have arts and crafts inside of the Blue House for kids. We'll have a couple of street hockey uh, uh, areas set up in the parking lot. We're gonna have concerts in the church. So this is just an expansion of what we did last year. We were limited due to COVID and, and you know capacity restrictions and and forced to be outdoors. And we really found a lot of people liked it outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think a lot of the comments we both got were, were really focused on, I've never been here before. Yep. I didn't know what you had. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think this was a perfect event to kind of bring people out to Greenmead. Now there's a little more with some more, it was a little more kids activities, uh, you know, a, a hospitality area to kind of keep people here a little longer. We don't have the capacity restrictions we had last year. So we, you know, we're expecting a bigger, better event, and this, you know, we want to continue this to grow, uh, and with our partnership with the chamber, and then and Masco sponsoring us as well, you know, we, I mean, I see great things for for this event and for Green Meat overall. Uh, I'm excited for this year, uh, other than being cold right now in particular. I'm really excited for for what this year and how this event looks and and how how much bigger it is and and how people respond to it. Um, with Parks and Recreation, you look at, you know, we don't have the restrictions a year ago, but there's still concerns about COVID. Sure. Talk about the importance with just not this, but other stuff you've done at Parks and Recreation to provide outdoor opportunities for residents. Yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think last year really highlighted the need, the importance of parks and, and outdoor events, right? In, in a time when, you know, when, when people were concerned about indoors and there was restrictions on gatherings indoors, and I really think that outdoors took such, it, it came to the forefront, right? Mm -hmm. I always say you couldn't buy a set of golf clubs, you couldn't buy a kayak, you couldn't buy a bike last year. Before there were supply chain issues in the world, there were, there were supply chain yeah. issues because the popularity of those, those you know, activities just skyrocketed, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think we've, we've seen nothing that, that's carried over. We've seen nothing to slow that down this year. The golf course set another record on top of, 2020 was a record year for golf in Livonia. 2021 broke that record. Um, we saw again, a significant use of our parks, our outdoor amenities, our programming increased outdoors. I mean, we took Kids Night Out, you know, which is a popular rec center event, moved that outdoors. Uh, Harvest Fest out here, we did at Greenmead for the first time this year. Uh, we did additional special events outdoors, and, and we've seen just a huge increase in that demand. We're back to about 70% of where we were pre-pandemic indoors. So I think we're still seeing that outdoor demand, and that was kind of why we kept with an outdoor theme uh, this year with keeping Santa on the porch. We thought, you know, people, I don't know when we're going to go back to normal, but we're not quite there yet. So we've got something for everyone right now. And in addition to the weekend evening stuff we'll have here with the uh, uh, Night of Lights, you have some other programming at Parks and Rec that'll take place here and throughout the community. Why don't you highlight that for the holiday season? Yeah, uh, we do. We have tea, uh, Christmas tea coming up here at Greenmead. We have lunch with Santa. Santa's Calling event is going on. And of course, I think I'm blanking on the number of years, but this is our, I, I believe our fourth year of the uh, Merry and Bright Holiday Parade. <clears throat> Um, so we do have a lot of holiday events coming up and it's, you know, if you're thinking about the holidays, New Year's Eve at the rec center is still going on. Uh, we'll have that this year. So there's a lot going on still for the holidays. And then right after the holidays, it's still a great time to get outdoors and enjoy what we have in Livonia. Ted, there's been years and years of, um, uh, donations and community support and planning for Greenmead. Why is it important to have such 
a high attraction event at, uh, like we're doing with the Night of Lights display and the other Parks and Rec offerings here at Greenmead. Why is this so important for Greenmead now and in the future? Well, I think Greenmead has been has been underutilized, you know, city park, right? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's it's a park. It's a historic park and we want to honor that. But it is an underutilized park. And I think, you know, whether it's Harvest Fest in the fall that we did or, or Night of you know Night of Lights now, again, these events draw attention to this site and, and really highlight people can walk around, they can see it, right? Instead of it just being a word or a place that they never have seen before, they can identify with it in some way, shape, or form. They can form a memory here. And that's really what Parks and Recreation is, is about memories, right? I mean, I always tell people, you know, when you think of Parks and Recreation, you might think of your neighborhood park, but if you think about all the times it's touched your life, from playing in a baseball league and growing up playing catch with your dad or whatever, or, or going to that swimming pool, learning how to swim, you know what I mean? Those are all memories that Parks and Recreation is part of. This is another way for Parks and Recreation to enter your consciousness, another memory you form with your family. And I think here, bringing it to Greenmead, highlighting Greenmead, Again, we're in the middle of a master planning process. We're, we're gonna be seeking out public input on the future of this site and, and what we wanna see added here. And I think that all ties in with what we're trying to do here for the Night of Lights. Well, Ted, uh, I, I hope many, many Livonia families and from our neighbors and neighboring communities have a new experience here uh, with well. the event we had. Ted, thanks for taking time with us Thank today. Thank you. So, the, a reminder, the Masco Night of Lights activities are set for December 3rd, 4th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 17th, 18th, and 19th, starting at 5 p.m. each night. The Friday and Saturday dates will run till 10 p.m., and the Sunday dates will run till 8 p.m. Santa will be on the porch from 5 to 8 p.m. on each of these nights. Admissions will be a recommended donation of $10 per vehicle, in which all admission proceeds will go towards maintenance of Greenmead and other community causes. We're now joined by Martin Zorro, the owner of Zorro's Christmas Lights, a Livonia resident who did the display here at Greenmead. Martin, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, appreciate it. How long have you been doing uh, uh, Christmas decorations professionally and what's the key to a good display? Uh, I've been doing this for 17 years, going on year 17. Um, the key to a good display is having everything themed right. You can't, you try to make sure everything is done. Like if you do the house, you want to make sure the theme on the left and the right, everything is equivalent to how you want your your setup to be. So everything's got its perks, everything is different, every house is different, but you just look at it and you say, this is what works, and here we are. So, Tell us uh, about, a little bit about what your strategy was in doing Green Mead, the village this um, year. Our strategy was to make this more family-oriented and family-friendly. We wanted to bring color to an atmosphere where kids love color. Mm -hmm. um, I say this and I, and, I, and I like white lights, but they're boring. So we brought in color for the kids that to sit there and say, ooh, wow, and check out the different colors that nobody carries. Um, behind me, we got Grinch, you got purple, you got winter green, you got ocean lights here, you got champagne lights, which is over there as well, and then down there. But you got all sorts of different colors that people don't see at your stores every day. So we wanted to bring something that people don't see and bring some good festiveness to this place and make sure it pops. Thank you, Martin, for joining Thank you. us. Yep. Appreciate it very much. We hope you are able to come out and enjoy the opportunity to check out this display that we'll have. That's all we have for this edition of Cityscape. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you'll see you out here, and we'll see you next time.